Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and today we begin a new book of the Bible as we go through the Holy Bible for the fourth time in the last 35 years. We come to the book of Zechariah. This is the second to the last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1. Remember, you can study the Bible in its entirety, all 66 books, all 31,000 plus verses, at thebibleversebyverse.com. As I mentioned, there are four series going all the way through the Bible. At least this is the fourth series. And so it's all there. And all you have to do is choose, click, and listen. And all you need to bring is your Bible to the Bible verse by verse dot com. Father, we pray your blessings on the book of Zechariah and on the word that we're going to look at today. Sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus name. Amen. In the eighth month of the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of I do, the prophet, saying. So Zechariah receives the word of God around October or November 520 B.C. 2. The Lord has been very angry with your fathers. Fathers refers to grandfathers and great-grandfathers. God had been angry with them because they refused to obey him, which is the only thing that makes God angry. Sin is the only thing that makes God angry. Otherwise, he's always in a good mood. Verse 3. Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord, the Lord of hosts, Return to me, says the Lord of hosts, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. God is saying, if you come back to me, you st- and you're sincere, you start obeying me, then I'm going to help you. God is like the father of the prodigal son. It doesn't matter how deep you get in sin, if you repent sincerely and you return to him, he will receive you. He doesn't hold a grudge if you're broken and contrite over your sin. He's not going to take you back if you don't repent. But if you do, he'll receive you. Four, do not be like your fathers to whom the former prophets preached, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Turn now from your evil ways and your evil deeds. But they did not hear nor heed me, says the Lord. Your fathers, your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? So the earlier prophets in the years past, in the days of their grandfathers, great-grandfathers, warned that God would punish the Israelites if they did not rep- repent, and they did not repent. So God sent Israel into exile for 70 years. The people are gone. Those people are gone. They're either dead or in exile because they wouldn't obey. Six. Yet surely my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants, the prophets, Did they not overtake your fathers? So they returned and said, stop right there for a second. When the Israelites finally quit trying to run from the word of God, they repented. You might as well cry, uncle, when it comes to God and his word, because the word of God isn't going away. No matter how hard you try to run from it or ignore it, it's not going away, and it still applies to you. 
It's something that you have to deal with. You either, re- you either submit to it, repent of your sin, find forgiveness through Jesus Christ, and everything will be fine. Or you keep ignoring it, or you keep rebelling against it, or you keep closing your eyes to it, and you're going to pay. Eventually, you will pay in hell forever. Seven. On the, well, I'm sorry, we got to go back to verse six. So they returned and said, just as the Lord of hosts determined to do to us, according to our ways and according to our deeds. So he has dealt with us. They confessed. God, you were right. Your word was right. That small remnant of faithful prophets that you sent compared to the vast majority of so-called preachers of our day who just told us what we wanted to hear, your prophets were right, and we were punished. God's word is always right, so it doesn't pay for a man of God, so-called, to preach anything but the pure word of God without watering it down. Why would you mess around with anything else? In addition to being in trouble with God, if you do water it down, it's pointless. The pure word of God comes to pass. It's truth. I'm not interested in dealing with untruth. There's enough of that garbage in the world. Verse 7, on the 24th day of the 11th month, which is the month Shebat, and the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to Zechariah, the son of Berechiah, the son of Edu, the prophet. So Zechariah receives this word from God on February 15th, 519 B.C., about three months or so after his first revelation. What does God say? I saw by night, and behold, a man riding on a red horse. And it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow. And behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. The man on the red horse that Zechariah saw could be an angelic messenger. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say. Could be an Old Testament appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ, an Old Testament appearance of God. Could be. We do know that red is the color of war in Scripture and the color of bloodshed. Verse 9, Then I said, My Lord, What are these? So the angel who talked with me said to me, I will show you what they are. Zechariah wanted to know the meaning of this vision, and that's good because God wants to tell him and he wants to tell us. It's just a good thing Zechariah asked questions. Verse 10. And the man who stood among the myrtle trees answered and said, These are the ones whom the Lord has sent to walk to and fro throughout the earth. God says, these are my agents. I'm sending them. I'm sending them throughout the earth. They will report on what is happening, obviously. Verse 11, so they answered, the angel of the Lord who stood among the myrtle trees and said, we have walked to and fro throughout the earth And behold, all the earth is resting quietly. The world was pretty comfortable. And that's because the Messiah hasn't come yet. The Lord God Almighty hasn't returned yet to judge them. That's why they're comfortable. Of course, it's a false comfort. Twelve, when the angel of the Lord answered and said, Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah against which you were angry these 70 years? The angel of the Lord prays on behalf of the Israelites. 
he is sympathizing with them because of their 70-year captivity, which, remember, was their just punishment for their rebellion and their idolatry. Verse 13, And the Lord answered the angel who talked with, to me with good and comforting words. God gave words of encouragement to his people. Even in his wrath, God is gracious. He gives hope to his children, even when he is in the midst of chastening them. 14. So the angel who spoke with me said to me, Proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with great zeal. God says, I love my people very much. And because of that strong love, he will do something about all the harsh treatment that his people have endured from her enemies. 15. I am exceedingly angry with the nations at ease. For I was a little angry, and they helped but with evil intent. God used the two nations, the big superpowers, Assyria and Babylon, to punish his sinning people. But Assyria and Babylon went too far. They tried to wipe the Israelites off the face of the earth. So God is angry because of their arrogance and their cruelty. 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord, I am returning to Jerusalem with mercy. My house shall be built in it, says the Lord of hosts, and a surveyor's line shall be stretched out over Jerusalem. God withheld his mercy from Israel for a time to punish them for their sin. But now he will be merciful to them. His wrath has run its course. His justice has been satisfied. So he will be merciful to them again. He will help them rebuild Jerusalem, the Jerusalem that their enemies destroyed. 17 again, proclaim, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, My cities shall again spread out through prosperity. The Lord will again comfort Zion and will again choose Jerusalem. God is saying, I'm, I'm not just going to restore my people. I'm going to fill them with good things. 18. Then I raised my eyes and looked, and there were four horns. Horns are a symbol of strength and power in Scripture. The prophet saw four of them. And here they probably refer to Egypt, which was a superpower at one time, Assyria, Babylon, and the next one, Medo-Persia. These were the four great powers, the four great horns that had been in the world up until the time of this prophecy. Because at this point, it was Medo-Persia that took over from Babylon. They were the big horn. They were the big superpower of the day. 19. And I said to the angel who talked with me, what are these? So he answered me, these are the horns that have scattered Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. The four horns represent countries which had, which had given Israel a hard time in the past 20. And the Lord showed me four craftsmen, and I said, what are these coming to do? So he said, these are the horns that scattered Judah, so that no one could lift up his head. But the craftsmen are coming to terrify them to cast out the horns of the nations that lifted up their horn against the land of Judah to scatter it. The craftsmen are seen cutting off the horns in this vision. 
So God is saying, I'm taking away the strength of those nations which have hurt you. I'm going to humble them. And the lesson I will leave you with today is that all the enemies of God, no matter how powerful they may be in this world, all the enemies of God and his people will one day be humbled and completely defeated. Those who wield their power to use it to hurt others simply because they have the power in this world to do it will we'll someday have that power completely removed by God and they will ju be judged and they will be punished. That's his job and he will do it. He's got a track record of it. He did it to Egypt. He did it to Assyria. He did it to Babylon. He did it to Medo-Persia. He did it to Rome. He did it to Greece. All the superpowers. We'll stop right there for today, and we'll pick it up in chapter 2 next time. Remember, study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. And if you would like to be a part of this ministry, pray for me and pray for God's Word. And when you take a break from studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, go to the front page, click the Donate button, and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. See you next time right here on Scripture Verse by Verse.